Welcome back to Star Soaps channel. How are you today? Good I hope. I hope you're having fun, whatever you're doing. Today is a really cold miserable day in the Taranaki and we're just huddling around the fire trying to keep warm. But this Friday I have a market that I'm going to and I'm going to make some yummy bath salts today that I'm hoping will sell at the market. I'm going to do a couple of different flavours, Moroccan orange and soothing lavender and eucalyptus. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and make us some bath salts. That's something different for this channel. Never made bath salts before. Pretty easy, but they're gorgeous. Now, main reason why I've chosen bath salts instead of bath bombs is for the people that can't, that don't have like a lot of money, basically. I don't want to say that they're poor or whatever, or on a budget or however you want to put it, but sometimes when you have a bath bomb, it's expensive to buy one, you chuck it in one bath and then it's done. The idea here is that you've got bath salts that you can use for lots and lots of different baths, so one purchase will last you more than one bath, so it's better value for money. <laughs> So here we go, making our bath salts. Come with me. Alrighty, so I'm going to measure my salts and, yeah, salts. <laughs> Two cups, so I'm just filling up my cup measurement over here on a nice flat surface. So you can see it is one cup of Epsom salt. Okay. Two cups. And then we're gonna have one cup of rock salt. One cup of rock salt. Wow, that looks so pretty. <laughs> okay. And finally two cups of Himalayan salt and this is the biggest container so it's going to be the difficult one to work with. So there's one cup of pink Himalayan and there's two cups of pink Himalayan. Okay so now we're just going to add to that, got the scale, so it doesn't need to be on the scale anymore, some kaolin clay. I've written down a tablespoon, but it might end up being more, we'll just see. It's like a heaped tablespoon or something. Cool. So it's about a tablespoon of kale and clay. And we also want to add a couple of tablespoons of baking soda. Baking soda is what makes it fizzing bath salt. So here's a couple of tablespoons of baking soda. Just give that a quick sort of stir through. Everything. And this is why I put it in this container. So the idea is that now that I am going to add a tablespoon of sweet almond oil. I'm just going to sort of, oh I might use my dripper, where are you dripper, in my pipette, Oops, sweet almond oil, to there, I don't know if that's a tablespoon or not, that's about two droppers full, let's see if we can always add more. Those are going to skew. I really have to fix this tripod. It's not the greatest. Sorry everyone. But hey, I got my lighting sorted. I had a comment the other day saying that I really needed to get better lighting and instead of moping and feeling sad about having a negative comment, I thought, right, I'm going to go get better lighting. So that's what's going on. <laughs> Let's give that a quick stir through too. And then this next cool trick is coming from Melissa Stanford of Lucky Seven Soaps. She had a bowl with a lid. I've just got a Sistema, yeah, Sistema clip container. And just give them a shake. Okay. Okay. 
I think we could probably add a little more sweet almond oil. Maybe just one more piper, pipette full. And Melissa used her trick with bath bombs, not bath salts, but I forget it was the same thing. It's just a good way to disperse everything. And now we're going to add some Moroccan orange fragrance oil because it smells amazing. And it's the middle of winter here and it's a bit sort of it's blue, it's miserable really. So I think this is just the kind of bath salts that people are going to be needing. Something that just makes you think of summertime. I love this fragrance oil. It is so delicious it sort of makes me think of about four or five different fruits obviously orange being the foremost but there's definitely raspberries maybe even apricots and peach in there oh so good so delicious and the other thing i want to add is a little bit of tincture there we go some lovely big luscious drops of this this is a healing oil that I bought for tattoos but I haven't actually had a tattoo for a while um, and the oil is made like all natural so I really want it to be used this is basically just like adding more gorgeous skin nourishing oil so again give it a bit of a mix to mix everything through and I'm just going to kind of crunch down like this because I think I saw when I was shaking it before that there was some um, lumps still I'm going to get all of those out. And then yeah, put it back on. Same thing. Shake, shake, shake. Oh, right now. Done. <laughs> now I just measure them out into bags. So now I just take my scales This bit is kind of tricky to do, especially one handed It's kind of great if you have somebody that can help you But I'm going to make these 300 gram bags of salts So I take a sturdy cup like this and then I just put the bag into the cup it just makes it a little bit easier and then I just weigh that and then tar that out so that I don't put too much in and then I just measure out 300 grams you could just do it like this if you'd rather it be a little bit slower but probably a lot safer and it's 300 perfect 300 grams Yay! So there's my first bag of salts. And so that's a really good deal in my opinion because you're going to get a lot of bars out of that. And they smell so good. And then just to sort of pretty it up obviously I'm just going to sell it in a plain Ziploc bag. So just to make it a little bit prettier. These beautiful royal blue organza bags. So the salts in the little Ziploc baggie go into the royal blue organza bag. They can be seen quite well through the bag. And then I place a business card here which tells you what's in the salts on the back of it. So on the front it's got all my contact details and then on the back you know what's in, your, what's in there. And that's how I sell them in these little bags like that. Well, I think they're pretty gosh darn adorable and the smell they attract people the smell um, escapes out and people can smell it like way stronger than my soap so I think that's pretty cool so I'm going to carry on now and fill up some more bags
Let's use another one. Oh, they're so pretty. Oh, it smells so divine. I kind of have a feeling that I'm going to stop at that. Actually, guys, I don't think I'm going to bother making the other blend. I don't have enough organza bags to package them up. And I sort of feel like last time I made too much. I feel like I'm probably just going to only have Moroccan orange bath salts. I feel like they'll be perfect, like I was saying, because it's the winter time and cold and they are very yummy. They are very yummy. Very yummy. So yummy. pushing it to have enough organza bags just to package these ones and it's kind of a shame because I have some really pretty pink ones that are shaped differently but they're too large and then I have some other gorgeous little gold ones but they're too small so <laughs> I need to get some more of this size I must admit the other thing I'm very excited about this rock salt for is making some salt soap I haven't actually made any salt soap before and I'm really looking forward to it, 100% coconut oil, salt, soap. That'll be fun. Okay, so I'm just trying to find, there you go, I found them. My little bags. perfectly and look at all the ones left for my bath so that's gonna be for my bath because I'm fully needing a bath on this miserable day oh my goodness do you know one thing I notice actually is that if I wake up in the morning and I have like a hot shower or a bath on a cold day like today I handle the cold so much better for the rest of the day it's like it warms me up oh so I should have done that earlier on but never mind better late than never right <laughs> and of course I suppose I would have got maybe like another half if I wanted to out of that but I'm just going to keep that for myself and I'm pretty happy with that I got from that recipe that made four yeah choice four and a bit be good if I could sort of work it out so just to the right amount that it made like five or something but I think if I use a little less than what I did then it would be exactly four and I always do this guys I've got to admit it I always enjoy having a little bit of whatever I've made for me every single soap that I make I will have an end from it and I will use it I mean I feel like that's quality control almost you know I'm making sure that it's good <laughs> if it's good enough for me but when it comes to my bath things like the last lot of bubble bars that I made and I made two big batches and then I just kept them all to myself and as much as I enjoyed pampering myself with them I felt bad that I didn't share them out with people I, I love giving my stuff to other people and of course it's great to sell it as well if I get lucky enough to do that so if you're lucky there might be an extended part of this video of me putting some of these in my bath and just seeing how that goes I'm gonna be on air Alright guys, here we are at my bath tub, and here is the bath salts that were left over. And I'm just going to sprinkle them into the water, just like that. Oh, this smells delicious. And if you want, you can give them a bit of a swirl around, make sure it melts into the water and dissolves completely. And that's all you need for a decadent divine bath. <laughs> so I was going to weigh that little bag for you guys and, and tell, tell us exactly how much that we had left. But 
unfortunately the bag decided to be one with a hole in it and I hadn't noticed that there was a hole in it. So I'm going to guess that there's maybe 100 grams if I'm lucky in there. And that's a push. That's a, a push. I'm sure it'll be divine. Thanks for watching guys. Do you want to see how a frugal soap maker handles a spill? I'm going to show you because I don't waste anything. That's my rule.